We're going to be tracking some box turtles today using radio telemetry. So right now I have an antenna and a receiver, a radio receiver. And the turtle has a little bit of a radio transmitter on its back, sending out a signal. And I can use the receiver to listen to that signal. And it's directional, so depending on where I point the antenna, I'll get a different strength of the signal. Right now we're pretty far away from the turtle. So you can maybe hear a little faint beep. I can hear it. You might not be able to hear it on the video. But that means that the transmitter is working. We're just going to have to walk a little bit and get closer, listen to the signal until it gets stronger. The signal is strong here. I can narrow down, turn down the sensitivity of this unit, so any beep is an important one. Oh, that was loud. what's making that beeping frequency. These particular turtles haven't been well studied in this area, and so we didn't know what type of habitat they were using, if they were on black rock property, if they were on private property, and understanding those, that information can help with its protection, whether that be understanding what type of management to use in the forest, at what time of year, depending on their activity cycles, and keeping an eye out for them if there's any sort of construction or development that might be happening in a nearby development or neighborhood. So one of the primary things is just to find out where they are and what habitat they're using. So last time we found this turtle, we put that little radio on so we could find it again quite easily. Quite easily, I say. It took a little while for us to find it. It's actually much further than I expected to be from where we first found it. But today we're going to be taking some measurements on its shell size, basically to see how big it is, its weight, and then checking for things like if it has any parasites on the outside, if it has any shell damage. And then what we'll be doing is actually applying a GPS backpack to it for a couple of days to collect some more data. This one will be especially interesting because it's in an area of the forest that I haven't seen too many of these turtles in. So it might be giving us some new information about where it's going. Because tracking it with radio telemetry takes a lot of time and effort. These little GPS backpacks will be able to record basically at a certain time interval, whatever we set it to be, for example, a couple hours. It'll, it'll record a GPS location, then we can come back, take the backpack off, download that information, and have a better understanding of what space it's using in this environment. Okay, so Jeremy, you're now programming the, the unit for taking measurements? Yeah, so I'm going to program our custom board for recording the GPS <clears throat> locations of the turtle, hopefully every two hours, <clears throat> which requires a little bit of programming in the woods. Yeah, so the main components uh, <clears throat> are the, is the battery. Uh, we have created, uh, we've taken an off-the-shelf uh, Arduino Pro Mini and coupled it with the custom design circuit board. Uh, the custom board sports uh, 256K of memory um, and provides a couple of connections for the battery as well as the GPS module. So this all kind of plugs together and then goes into the, the enclosure. Alright, well I'm just molding some marine epoxy, which is sort of like Play-Doh. has two different sort of chemical compositions, and when you fold it and knead it, those chemicals bind together and then they'll start to harden. So it will 
be able to bind the GPS unit temporarily to the turtle shell. This uh, epoxy takes about an hour to fully cure, but it starts to become less malleable within a couple of minutes. Because these turtles are mainly terrestrial and won't be submerging in water anytime soon, I'm a little less worried about it waiting for that full hour before releasing, making sure we never had a problem with that. How do you decide where to put it on the turtle? So it's a little bit of a trial and error, but uh, this is, you know, it's a pretty big profile, which isn't great for when the animal needs to burrow. But when the animal does burrow, it goes normally face forward. And so any anything that's burrowing under would be up here. And then hopefully on the back end, it would be less likely to have direct contact with anything that could pop it off. But uh, with the with the current size of this, there is no perfect placement. But I think that for the time being, this will be uh, an, an okay location. This is a male, so another thing you have to be worried about is, especially in the back, if this were a female, a male could try to mount her for copulation, and this would get in the way. But because this is a male, we don't have to worry about that, and can place it here. I don't know if we've actually put a GPS unit on a female quite yet. yet. Any of the ones that I've done have been male, but um, yes, if we we're going to do a female, uh, we might arrange it uh, maybe closer to the front, especially depending on the time of year and expectations of um, sort of burrowing behavior might change our decisions. We're also working on a redesign of the enclosure so it will be a lower profile. Yes. So we'll not only be a lower profile, but will be easier to swap out the different components as batteries need recharging and data needs to be downloaded. So. And you're only leaving it on for a week because that's as long as the battery is going to last. Yes. yes, and it's getting closer to colder weather and we want to make sure that we can take it off so they can successfully hibernate without the extra, extra bulky backpack. So he's done. I have finished putting the epoxy on. I might give him one little, uh, just for fun, a little paint coat of a Sharpie marker, black, black permanent marker on the gray, just to make it blend in even more, but pretty happy with this for, for a week long retachment. And we'll be back to take it off soon.